Michaela Chester here. I am with Andy Wittry. We are continuing our NCAA mascot series today, this time with UC Irvine, a little different mascot than a lot of the others. We've got Peter the Anteater. Andy, how did this mascot come to be? This all dates back to two water polo players. This is Pat Glasgow and Bob Ernst. And back in the day, there's two different stories. One goes that they saw the comic strip BC, which contained cavemen and dinosaurs and all these kind of prehistoric creatures, including an anteater. And it was kind of popular at the time. And in fact, it was kind of the only popular cultural representation of an anteater. And so the story goes, they may have seen this and thought, hey, our school needs a new mascot. Let's choose an anteater. The second version goes that Glasgow was lifeguarding at Newport Beach. And one day the idea just kind of came to him of, hey, like we need a mascot. Let's choose anteater. So it's kind of disputed of which two versions, but there's definitely sort of a connection with this old BC Comics strip. So in the NCAA, we're kind of used to big, scary mascots, tigers, wildcats, and a lot of other schools in the area around UC Irvine were bears. So how did they land on anteaters and how do they like it? That's right. So at the time, within the University of California system, you had the Cal Berkeley Bears, you had the UCLA Bruins, which is a bear mascot. And there was definitely some administrative pressure that, hey, our new school, UC Irvine, should also have a bear mascot. And I talked to Audra Eagle Young, who is a head archivist at UC Irvine Libraries. And she had said that at the time, Irvine wasn't kind of a well-established city or even a school. It was kind of this up-and-coming new area, new school. And there was lots of kind of independent-minded thinking. And there wasn't much to do on campus besides sports. And so they kind of wanted to have their own kind of creative, original mark on campus with their mascot. They also said that even though it's not outwardly aggressive, if an anteater is attacked, they will fight to the death. And they thought that kind of represented the kind of the student culture and the student body of, you know, not big, not scary, aggressive. But if it comes down to it, they will fight for UC Irvine. And that was kind of the thinking that they weren't the bears like Cal or UCLA, but it was kind of this special, unique and still powerful mascot. How was the mascot officially decided? Was everybody at the school behind it? Absolutely not. So there was initially an informal poll at a student dance where anteaters won, and some of the mascots in the ballot were the centaurs, the seahawks, the toros, the roadrunners, which are also very kind of unique, clever, original nicknames versus just, you know, the bears like UCLA and Cal. And so anteaters won that poll, and the administration expressed its approval of like, hey, we don't want this, that's not our mascot. And then later on, there was an official poll, and anteaters received 51%, so just barely won this vote. And actually, the second-place finisher was none of these options. So people didn't even have like a second favorite mascot option. And so Anteaters then kind of officially won. The water polo players had campaigned for it. They had passed out buttons that had the Anteater on it. There were cheers at water polo matches. Uh, one of the comic strip kind of sayings in BC was Zot, Zot, Zot. And so water polo fans would go to the games and chant Zot because that's the two players that kind of created this mascot. Zot, Zot, Zot. So in the second poll, it officially won. And even the AD at the time, his name was Wayne Crawford, is that he said, I don't think this will be permanent. And 55 years later, Anteaters is still the mascot of UC Irvine. And now it's very much so permanent. You mentioned that the origin of it dates back to this comic strip. Does the family of the comic strip have any connection to the school today? So unfortunately, the original creator, Johnny Hart, has since passed away. But actually, the comic strip BC is still around. Hart's grandson, Mason Mastiani, he's now the current artist. And there's been a connection where the school reached out to the family of Johnny Hart, and they kind of asked, do we have your blessing, your permission to use the anteater as our mascot? And even though Johnny Hart had never been to UC Irvine's campus, he had no official tie to the school. His family has since said after his passing, like, yes, you have our blessing, you have our permission, is that we think it's kind of cool that you guys kind of, you know, use this comic strip and then made your official school mascot the anteater. Well, now it's Peter the anteater. What does Peter look like today? Over the years, Peter's actually had some species confusion. So there's kind of some question of, you know, is this guy an aardvark? Is he an anteater? Uh, is he almost like a bear or a dog? Like he was initially on all fours as kind of this, you know, hunchback, unassuming character. And then back in the day, there was a $3,000 marketing campaign and where the former marketing director, Carl Herman, he actually, he went to zoos across the state of California, even all the way to Washington to observe anteaters in real life to kind of get a sense of what is this animal? What is our mascot actually about? And then the school hired a marketing firm to create 200 different sketches of possible anteater mascots. And then over the years, this kind of, you know, hunchback slumped over character of Peter the anteater has since become one that now stands up on two legs versus on all fours. He's now kind of athletic and muscular. 
there's drawings where he's wearing like board shorts and sunglasses or, you know, he's throwing a Frisbee or he's surfing. So he's gone to a kind of a much more modern athletic looking figure. Well, that's great. Thanks so much, Andy, for sharing the research on Peter the Anteater today. Thanks, Michaela.